several times and then the modern code came in so helsinki De helsinki declaration was formulated by mainly the world medical association and uh, they described the ethical principles for the medical community regarding human experimentation so this was the helsinki declaration you can follow the websites i have given wherever i have taken i have given the reference to that then in 1991 who came out with the international guidelines on ethics and epidemiology 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 means that when there is some epidemic or some kind of spread of disease then the cause of disease can be found via the epidemiological research so epidemi epidemiology cal a code that came out so in 1991 and the book book uh, you can download freely because these are available these are freely distributable Inter that is international guideline for ethical review of epidemiological studies same kind of studies you know, normally uh, is done in agriculture also epidemiological study where the similar it is not exactly same but similar that uh, you try to find out that in a in a area particular area there can be based more salt or more arsenic then you try to find out the what is the effect of that on the cultivation or products agricultural produce how it is affecting the human health then it is obviously it comes under epidemiological study so that also so that's how that this is this is a general guideline which can be interpreted in different manners for different topics in different areas it can be interpreted these are general guidelines and uh, this was published as cmos uh, non serial publication it is a separate book a separate booklet and last version we can see that it was in 2009 2009 it was the last version came out then the, the there is nothing no new information who came out with another kind of ethical guideline for biomedical research involving human experiments it ke it it was published in 1993 and at present the last published version is 2002 version so uh, this guideline we are in india the indian guideline was formed on the basis of the who this helsinki declaration at first in 199 1980 indian system of ethical uh, human experiment ethical guideline formation started and then slowly it went on and with the helsinki declaration slowly it, it went into the you know, who who structure world health organization ethical structure and at present there is a, there are many guidelines available in indian council of medical research website many guidelines not one there is a human experiment guideline there is biotechnology experiment guideline there is animal experiment guideline so there is a full list of guidelines in uh, if you go to the uh, you know, in indian council of medical research uh, website so mostly they came from the international guidelines and then adopted slowly in, in the country the first version of the developed icmr developed uh, icmr developed uh, ethical code was in 1980 this is a small version mostly the helsinki declaration conversion then it was it was uh, it was uh, it was modified and it was expanded largely in the in the year around uh, 2000 the, under the under the chairmanship of honorable justice uh, sri venkat chalaya so that that made a modern indian ethical code modern indian ethical code but at that time it was only one ethical code only one book only one book that contained one portion as general ethics then specific ethics 
general ethics is for everybody, then uh, specific ethics for different kinds of experiments, different kinds of experiments, tissue culture experiment, biotechnology experiment, then uh, other animal experiments. So, there are the different kinds. So, one general guideline and then specific guideline. So, that was the structure of the book. And now, what happened? The book has been modified by ICMR and uh, there, there are various versions of the book. Versions is one is biomedical engineering and a version, there is uh, animal version, there is biotechnology version. So, separate books are available, but general portion is same, general portion has not changed much except there is introduction of some environmental damages. In all cases, in all ethical cases or a, all ethical discussions, there is one big issue that is do no harm, do no harm. And if you insert a needle in the body in a normal human being, you are doing harm, isn't, isn't so? In sports, if you want to know that whether a person can become sprinter or long distance runner, then a biopsy has to be taken and that is to be taken under general anesthesia and on a normal person. So, it is, it is harm, obviously it is harm. So, naturally there has to be some system that where you can ad adopt mechanism to do a permit the experiment, but without without doing much of harm, deadly harm, which happened in Germany that mass killing, so it should not be there. And there are four main issues that people should remember that uh, autonomy. Autonomy is that when we are carrying out experiment on human being, then every human being has his own respect. He is a respectable man, whether he is a he is a very poor person, whether he is a rich person or caste, creed, anything, but every human being has his own respect. So, that respect cannot be violated. That respect cannot be violated. It is called autonomy. Every human being is autonomous. Every human being is autonomous. Autonomy, he should be given autonomy. He has the right to decide to take participate in the experiment or not. He has a right to participate in the experiment or not. In case of plants, the plants cannot talk. So, what happens? Anything can be done. Anything can be done. So, naturally the ethical code relating to plant came in a different form. I will I'll come to that in the last part of the lecture. In a different form it came. So, naturally autonomy, we, we, since every human being are autonomous, then we have to take consent, informed consent. A risk is to be informed, then privacy to be maintained and confidentiality is to be maintained. I, personally, I can, tell, I can tell you that there are many scientific experiments done by us, which we never published because of the confidentiality issue. We cannot publish them. It has to be confidential. In defense, in defense research laboratories, they do not publish everything. Then they do many experiments, but they do not publish everything, because there are issues of con confidentiality and privacy. Then beneficence. Beneficence means it should be beneficial, whatever harm, some kind of harm is to be done obviously for the sake of the learning and for the sake of the expansion of the knowledge, some kind of harm is to be done, but the cost between the harm damage, damage and benefit is to be weighed very well. There has to be benefit, more, more benefit than harm. If the harm is more, benefit is less, then that cannot be, that experiment cannot be allowed. So, basic, basic system, all the, all the regulations, whatever I will be reading afterwards, all the regulations came from these four, these four basic concept. 
that it should be the benefit should be more than the harm. It is it has to happen. It should benefit should be more than the harm, and always try to do good. No harm, do good. No harm, do good. In uh, uh, in this system, if if science scientific experiments are carried out, then obviously we can reduce the damage to the society. and damage to the human body human animal body or plants also then non maleficence means there there should not be deliberate harm sometimes people conceal that this experiment is required because it is very important this knowledge is very important so some way some way it is concealed becomes concealed uh, one one very important example is that we have seen many research articles published by authors on effect of cigarette smoking and funded by a cigarette company this happens the the research article is on effect of cigarette smoking and funded by a cigarette company so that that, that is that is in that case the the conflict of interest comes conflict of interest because science wants to find out the truth science wants to find out the truth but truth by the support of the person who is causing the damage so that that's that's that is that is something in science is now in, in, in at present it is it is taken very seriously so when we publish paper in a international journal we need to declare that whether there is a conflict of interest where from the fund came experiment fund for the experiment every detail is to be given if you try any international publication then you will find that ethics whether ethical issues are <coughs> covered sorry yeah. I, i have a very bad throat condition <coughs> so no uh, there should not be any deliberate harm not in the disguise of benefit not even in the disguise of benefit it can happen it, uh, people become a little bit uh, career under pressure then it can be a shortcut to reach higher level uh, sometimes it happens but that should not be done then justice distribution of risk and benefits should be equitable risk and benefits one society by making suffer one to one society to bringing suffer suffering to one society one kind of population <coughs> for the benefit of other kind of population is not allowed it it should be equitable distribute equitable distribution generally why why it happens there there are advertisements that there will be an experiment uh, on starvation effect of starvation and effect of starvation uh, will be un- until death so whoever participates they will be given compensation with a huge compensation okay so the benefit is that it is a huge money in one side huge benefit and in other side is a risk which is well known risk that he will die well known risk declared but this this kind of experiments also happen this kind of a famous experiment i can i can tell i read it during my bsc days that a group of 60 people were made to starve under made to starve it is no food and they found out that what happens until that the total biological experiment it happened during 80 during 60 70s it has happened so so this can benefit should be equitable the risk should be covered risk should be should be covered if if there is a chance of hazard then hazard should be covered 
these are the main principles. Now we will go in the legal procedures. So, what ICMR manual says that, that there is a statement of general principles. General principles. These are general principles which will guide the experiment to control the experimental procedures. To control the experimental procedures, what can be done, what cannot be done. <coughs> First principle comes for the last one which we have told. It should be essential. Essential. One has to one has to establish that this experiment is essential. Essential means that uh, without this experiment, the knowledge cannot progress. So it should be that kind of thing. So whereby after due consideration of al alternatives, so one has to consider all alternatives first. If it can be the same, same conclusion can be reached by other methods or other alternatives, then the high risk experiment should be avoided. If some experiment can be done can by, by alternative method which are low risk, that should be done instead of a high risk experiment. Then in, the, in that, that consideration should be in the light of the existing knowledge that what is coming forward afterwards that nobody knows. So, uh, under the existing knowledge condition whether it becomes essential or not that is to be established. And use of in human participant is considered to be essential for the purpose of research. Otherwise, it should be done on animals. If it is not essential for human experiment human trial, then it should be done on animals or other systems or some, sometimes simulation. Many of the modern drugs are developed, many of the modern drugs are developed in the dry laboratory, we call it dry laboratory in softwares. Within the softwares drugs are developed and then after the drugs are tested within the software system. If it, it proves that it does less harm, then only it, it goes to animal trial. Then after animal trials, first third, at least third stage of animal trial, then goes for the first stage of human trial. First stage of human trials. So, these, these are the systems which works better and that, that, can, that can be called little bit ethical procedures. And this should be vetted by the ethics committee. Then the question came that who will judge that uh, it is essential or not? Then that there should be a committee who of the of, of the of the group of people who will be deciding that whether it is essential or not. They should have the knowledge of the subject, and they, are, they should have the combination. What I seemer generally suggests that. There has to be social workers, there has to be judges, legal experts, the medical doctors, they all will decide that whether the experiment can, how much harm it can do and whether the harm and benefit is, is uh, well distributed. <coughs> Second principle is that voluntariness. No human being can be forced to come into the experiment. Forced means either in uh, directly forced or indirect force. Nothing can, nothing should happen like that. So respect for the right of the participant to agree or not to agree. Agree, he can agree or he may not agree. That option is to be given. If he, if he agrees wholeheartedly, then accepted. If he has some hesitation, then he should not be persuaded as such. It should be just, just uh, don't, don't, don't do experiment on such people. So voluntariness, he voluntarily the person should come forward and without, without much of, much of persuasion and one thing is very, should be remembered in very clearly that he should be allowed to leave the experiment at any point of time. 
after some time he may feel that no experiment is doing much harm to me so i don't want to do continue then he should be allowed to discontinue he should be allowed to discontinue so so agree or agree to participate in the research or withdraw research from uh, from research at any time and this is to be allowed this is paramount this is to be allowed and informed consent process ensures that participants rights are safeguarded so if you take informed consent at first you have to tell him that these are the experiment we are doing this will happen to you and this is these are our assumptions that this may happen also so all these things are to be told very clearly then he will judge his own risks and factors then he will participate so this is known as principle of voluntariness this is the second principle third is the principle of non exploitation non exploitation whereby research participants are equitably selected equitably selected so that the benefits and burdens of the research are distributed fairly and without arbitrariness and discrimination generally what happens if you announce a big award for the experiment then the poor people will come then it is a kind of exploitation it becomes it's unfortunate but it happens kind of exploitation it happens so then this and that that is a kind of discrimination we are taking a sample the if we talk of statistical sampling then we are taking a sample from a group of people particular set of people which and which will not match with the other group of people unmatched population so that is that that creates another hazard in the experimental interpretation so equitable distribution and sufficient safeguards sufficient safeguards to protect vulnerable groups should be ensured sufficient safeguards i i will tell one experiment for example uh, there is med in medical system there is a test which is known as treadmill test <coughs> treadmill test is done for to evaluate the condition of the heart evaluate the condition of the heart in that system rule is that the work load will be given and it will be raised slowly to upwards hard load hard load hard load and until he he gets exhausted and when he gets exhausted he may have a have a heart attack now if such experiment is done is carried out in a condition where there is no hospital no doctor then you can imagine what can happen okay so naturally naturally such experiments has to be done in a hospital where all facilities are there if something happens then he can be revived safeguard so that is called safeguard so safeguards are to be ensured without ensuring the safeguard the experiment should not be done if some kind of vaccination is done trial of vaccination then it is to be safeguarded the after effects of the vaccination there can be there can be allergic reaction there can be so many things possible then that is to be safeguarded i don't know how many of you has have seen the, the process of ct scan anybody knows ct scan ct scan there are two types of ct scan one is a contrast another is non contrast in non contrast you are put under the ct scan machine without any injection of of the dye 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 means some kind of uh, some kind of uh, chemical which will illuminate that particular tissue without dye is done in that case the hazard of the dye is not there but if it is done contrast means the dye is injected then in in some cases in many cases it happens it there can be allergic reaction 
there can be allergic re reaction in certain, in certain situations this allergic reaction can be life threatening also. <coughs> so naturally though such kind of experiments or such kind of things when it is to be done fMRI, fMRI is an experiment where there are lot of risks. So such experiments are to be done in total medical care where the safeguard is proper, safeguard is proper. Then there is a question of social responsibility. Whereby the research is planned and conducted so as to avoid creation of or depending the social or historic divisions or in any way disturb social harmony in communal relationships. This is a new clause which has been put up in uh, the recent la last version 2017 version of ICMR code that uh, any no experience should be done which can cause communal disharmony or social disharmony. If you, if we think of the German experiments, that was that was a disturbing thing. It was it was one-sided game. On a particular kind of society, particular kind of people, where it was done. So that is that that created social disharmony. Lot of, uh, lot of community interrelationship changes. Okay, so many people had to leave uh, Germany to other countries. So such experiments should uh, should are not acceptable. So, so it should be the the social response social responsibility should be checked. Whether it is a socially it is a responsible research work or irresponsible research work, that should be checked. So that's why <coughs> social workers should be a part of the ethics committee. Then principle of ensuring privacy and confidentiality. Privacy and confidentiality. Are you doing experiment on HIV patients? HIV patients and uh, patients uh, on uh, which disease is normally not discussed in the society. So that that disclosure should not be there. So these, these are these are private things. This should be this should be confidential. So privacy of the person and confidentiality of the information is to be maintained. So if anything is to be published, then it is to be published in a form where it does not harm the person in, in privacy and confidentiality. So, so we, we call it desensitization process. The data before publication, the, the research work is to be written in such a way that it becomes des, uh, desensitized, desensitized in terms of the privacy issue and confidentiality issue. So that that is that is important. That is a technique. There are techniques to do such things. So there are big books on that. That how desensitization is done. Um, special example they have um, pointed out that under certain cases where people may have suicidal tendency, then the privacy has to be has to be compromised. Then the the responsible persons who are taking care of that patient has to be told about that condition. So, in, in such cases the privacy can be broken and this is, this, is, this is to be done legally, this is to be done legally under a court order, under a court order, valid, valid uh, court, court order. Okay. So, this kind of privacy, uh, uh, privacy changes and uh, under the court of law it is required, then this can be done. Otherwise all government, uh, government things are confidential, but in certain cases government has to reply. So, so in, in court cases only, so it is same, same like that. Then principle of risk minimization, 
risk is to be minimized. Experiment, risk to the experiment is to be minimized. For example, if we want to carry out an experiment where there is the injections are to be given, then the needle, use of the needle, sterilization of the needle, sterilization of the skin, all are to be taken care of. So that you that the risk of infection is reduced, risk of infection. It, it may not be the drug may not be doing harm, but the infection that came with the needle that may do harm. So that should be taken care of. So minimization of the risk is must. Then principle of professional competence, professional competence. I am a physiologist, but I cannot do some experiment which which a doctor should do. I cannot cross that border. So qualified person for a medical experiment is a doctor, clinical doctor. Even a physio doctor learns physiology first, physiology and then becomes doctor. Still a physiologist cannot do that kind of experiment. Okay. And uh, sometimes I say in a, in a joking, in a, as a joke, that we write, we are, uh, after getting a PhD, we write doctor, dear, <laughs> which is under the court of, under legal, legal system, it is uh, illegal, it is illegal, doctors, people, people are very fond of such things, uh, I, I have a doctor in front of me, uh, very dangerous, very dangerous, uh, think of a situation. I will tell you, I, I, I was traveling, why I stopped it, I, I don't do it. I was traveling in a train, Rajani Express, and uh, my ticket was booked by from my office, and uh, they wrote Dr. Asis Goswami. Now, I, suddenly I heard my name is being announced that, Doctor, please come, there is a heart attack case. what you can do. This is a tactical situation. I have, I have faced it in my life and after, after that I told, inst I instructed, no, where you should write. <laughs> no, I, this is not done. Because sometimes this can, this can create trouble for others. So this, this thing is not acceptable. So the professional competence, only the person who is competent to carry out certain kind of research can carry out that kind of research. That professional competence is to be there. A person who does not know how to do pipetting, uh, I think uh, people will know pipetting, pipettes, you have to suck in chemical, so they, they, it's a very, very tough technique. It takes long, many time, many months to learn exact pipetting method. So the, without learning, suddenly I have got a machine, so do people, it's, it's, it will give a wrong result. That. If, this is a very simple thing, simple people. It is, the, all things are now automatic, there are, uh, there are systems, it will, it will take that much only, but still your hand should be perfect. So that skill is to be acquired first, then the competence, then you are competent. So without acquiring the competence, the experiment should not be done. So professional competence is a very important issue. Professional competence. I, if somebody can handle the instrument or somebody cannot handle the instrument. Then principle of maximization of benefit. Benefit is to be maximum. So it should overweigh. It should overweigh the harm. Overweigh means if we, if we have a uh, balance, then the harm should go up, the benefit should go down, go down, over away. The harm should go up and benefit should go down, then only we can got, we can get the maximization of the benefit. So the due care is taken to design and conduct research in such a way as to directly or indirectly maximize the benefit, directly or indirectly maximize the benefits to the research participants and to the society, not only participant, it is to the society also. 
Okay. Participant will be benefited. Naturally, the person who is doing research, he will be benefited. But at the same time, the equal benefit should go to the society also. So without society, leaving the society aside, I have my career. So I have to mm -hmm. grow my career. So I will do experiments and uh, whether society gets anything or not, I don't bother. So that kind of uh, attitude is not tolerated in the scientific societies nowadays. At present, it is very, very tough. It is not tolerated at all. Principle of institutional arrangement. So institutional arrangement should be there so that an experiment is carried out in a proper manner and proper ethical uh, rules. So I think everywhere in our uh, system, on, in our university and other, other places, ethical committees are there who look into these issues that whether it is, it is being followed, manpower is there, competency is there, everything checks and then the experiment is done. Number 10, principle of transparency and ac ac accountability. Transparency. Transparency means if somebody wants to check it, then it can be allowed, it should be allowed that somebody comes in and does the checking, that whether the everything is okay. In the ethical committee, members can come anytime and check. Even society, members of the society can come anytime and check. And second aspect is that whatever you are doing, you have to publish it in journal so that public becomes benefited out of your research work. Public gets benefit out of your research work. Publish. That is how the public concept of publication came. I have done some experiment, I have kept it in the laboratory itself and I know, I know myself only then the benefit is not transferred. So trans there is no transparency, accountability. The moment it goes in public, then people will check that whether it is correct or not. That check is important. Once article is published, somebody will try to follow it and try to repeat it and prove it or disprove it that it is correct or not correct. That should be allowed and it should be placed in the public domain public domain. Public domain means that it should be published in such journals where maximum people will see. Maximum persons will see. They are publishing in a small journal, local journal and taking the credit, then uh, who knows it? Nobody knows it. Very bad situation. Okay. So research plan and outcomes emanating from the research are brought to the public domain through registries, reports and scientific and other publications while safeguarding the right of privacy and of the participants. Right of the participants are safeguarded and published both. Then the stakeholders involved in the research should disclose any existing conflict of interest that means cigarette company funding cigarette research. So that, that is a conflict of interest. So conflict of interest is checked and, and uh, the conflict of interest is should be, it should be managed appropriately and uh, research should be conducted in a fair, honest and impartial, transparent manner to guarantee accountability. Accountability means if a drug is discovered and uh, somebody claims that it can cure something and afterwards if drug used and it came, it, it does harm, then the person runs away, that, that is not proper. So accountability is to be fixed, that who is accountable for this. If there are seven, seven researchers working together in different parts of the world and publish one article. Who is accountable for what? Okay. So seven persons sitting in different parts of the world conducted one experiment in, in joint collaboration, collaborative action. These are very common nowadays. Then, the, then accountability. Who, accountability means 
we need to declare in the while while publishing that who is responsible for which part of the experiment yes i can show you my publication we will declare it that this man's name has come because he has contributed to this this man is contributed to this this man contributed so accountable so this here the account accountability is fixed but in all foreign journals this is a mandatory practice what you are telling is of uh, locals no. if you if you go for the international publication then conflict of interest accountability these are essential and ethics ethical covering is essential component otherwise they will not accept it simply throw away principle of principle of totality of responsibility so the stakeholders involved in research are responsible for their actions so you are doing research work huh it is not opposite one you are doing research work you are responsible See, if there is a total failure in gross, including everything, then it is a second part. At first, accountability is fixed that this man is accountable for this, this man is accountable for this, but there there is some other component, totality of responsibility. Who takes the responsibility? totality of the responsibility why why stakeholders involved in research are responsible for their actions stakeholders but research work is done uh, by a person who is benefited and in term in in other term the society is also benefited so they are stakeholders now society cannot always blame so they are since society is also involved they they get the benefit out of it so sometimes the harm is to be tolerated also okay so there is a mutual mutual trust mutual trust in the first slides remember i have shown that trustworthiness mutual trust this is mutual trust and total zero of responsibility just remember the experiment that the failure of the moon landing Uh, who took the responsibility the lunar landing failed then who took the responsibility prime minister himself so <laughs> there there was there were situ- situations where dr kalam uh, first president of india then he, he was the project cord project leader he was project leader and uh, the missile missile development program and the uh, one whole development failed then what what to be uh, what is to be answered to the public so that then director of the isro that isro he came forward and he took the whole responsibility that i am responsible for all these things and so that's that's the thing in science this is totality of responsibility and accountability is a very very interesting issue and we have seen many cases like this the recent case this is a recent case where the land landing failed you can imagine can you imagine how much how much crore has been spent on that crores the million crores from the starting of the component level to to that level the failed one experiment failed and the one experiment cause uh, cost was like that so the so somebody some sort of professional social and moral responsibilities compliant uh, with ethical guidelines and related regulations are 
binding to on, to, uh, on all stakeholders directly or indirectly. If lunar landing is successful, then the society benefits. But even if it is unsuccessful, then what is to be done? Guillotine. So then some ethical procedures were carried out to fix the responsibility and accordingly they, that, distribute, that will be distributed. Risk is to be distributed, benefit is, all to, is to be dis distributed. So that is, a, that is a mutual trustworthiness. Principle of environmental protection, this was the last entry in the, it was not before, uh, before 2017 this environmental protection in, uh, clause was not there in the regulation. Now it has been included and this says that researchers are accountable for ensuring protection of the environment and resources at all stages of the research in compliance with existing guidelines and regulations. So environmental protection experiment cannot Environmental protection is very interesting thing. If you visit a hospital clinic, then you will find there are tubs kept with sign uh, with biohazard items, uh, recyclable items, plastic items defined. So environmental issue is taken care of. So biohazard is to be handled in a different way, biohazard materials. Environmental protection is to be done in a different way and uh, environmental protection is to be done in a different way means that needles should be kept in such a way that it should not be, uh, it should not affect another person. So it should be destroyed on the spot. Nowadays, nowadays they use needle cutters. So after giving injection they will cut the needle or taking the blood they will cut the needle. And that needle will go to a place where it will be burnt away, simply burnt away. Okay. So that process should be there. And during burning, there will be a lot of fumes, hazardous fumes. So there should be filters available so that the amount of fumes, hazardous fumes coming out from the burning of the hazardous chemicals or items is not there. So maximization of protection should be there. So this environmental clause was added afterwards, recent inclusion. And uh, so protection of the environment is a big issue. Now, huh? battery law, okay, no problem. Oh. Only for, so informed consent. Informed consents are to, be for, are to be written in a very careful manner. We have carried out experiments on blind people and for blind people we have used a braille format so that they can read it, that what is there. They cannot read a text written in a paper, so they have to be given a braille, braille system. So we have used like that, so this is a mandatory mechanism, there is a man mandatory mechanism and uh, there are procedures of forming the uh, this informed consent uh, form. So you have to give an experimental detail to him so that he can understand and then and after understanding he will sign in front of the witness and then there is a standard procedure, legal procedure. So that is to be followed. Then I will speak little bit about uh, the Agricultural research. Now I am searching ethical, ethical guidelines for agricultural research for quite some few days. But uh, it is very difficult to get. General guidelines work for, the, for all purpose. Whatever 12 general guidelines is there, that equally works with uh, biotechnology and uh, plant system, plant biology, any, anywhere, any, any human or animal or plant system, the, the same principles will work. Only thing, the one aspect is mentioned in, 
in a, in a ethical ethics book that there is chances of contamination uh, contamination of food contamination of food that is a big issue contamination of food where from it can come it can come from the soil it can come from the pesticides it can come from the hormones what what is being used oh the bandh kar dai wala shut down iske shut down kar de ta hai Vikram, it's a battery, guys. 